Welcome back to Python scripting for GIS applications, spring 2013. This is a class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. From last time, your assignment was to create a two meter circle centered at XY coordinates of 5, 5, and then randomly locate 100 points with um, locations ranging from 0 to 10 in XY coordinates. And then if any circle is, any point is within um, that circle, we're going to output its XY coordinates and its distance to the center of the circle. So the first thing we'll do is import the random module, and then we'll import OGR for working with shape files. And actually, we're not going to work with shape files. We're just going to work with geometry here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a circle at coordinate 5 and 5. So I'll put a little comment here. And we'll first make a point object at that location. So we make a point object. And then we'll assign the coordinates to that point object. And then our circle is going to be a buffer. So we're going to buffer this point object a distance of 2. So take our point object and buffer it by 2. So that created a circle object, which is a polygon. And then we'll get the geometry and get that perimeter, which will be the line of the circle. So first we'll make a perimeter object, which is a line string. And then from our circle, we'll use the boundary function to get the polyline defining the boundary of our buffer polygon. OK, so now we'll create 100 random points. So we'll do that in a loop. So for i in the range from 0 to 100. And then x is going to randomly vary between 0 and 10. And y will randomly vary between 0 and 10. And then we'll take our point object and we'll assign it those randomly located x, y coordinates. So add a point 2d to our point object to define where it is in x, y space. And then we'll use the function contains. So if our circle contains our point object, then we're going to print out the point object. So print out our point object and export it to a well-known text format. And then we'll print a distance to the circle perimeter. So we've got this point object, and we're going to use the distance function to get what is the distance from that point object to the perimeter of our circle. And then we'll just do one more print. So basically, the only time we're going to print out things is if our circle contains our point object. And we've got 100 point objects that we're generating. And the distance for every um, point that's inside our circle should be less than 2, since our buffer was 2. So here our distance is 1.28, 0 0.24, 0 0.11, 1.73, etc. So our distance to the edge of the circle is always less than 2. OK, in this session, I'm going to teach you how to do overlay operations in Python scripting. So here's an example. We've got a square, and this square, I believe, has ID 101. And then we've got a second square, and this second square is ID 201. And what we would like to do is intersect the two, so basically give us back this polygon where the two squares intersect each other. So that's basically what we're going to try to do in Python scripting. 
Okay, so here's what the script's going to look like. Is basically we're going to open our Square 101 shape file, and then that will become our Square 1 layer, and then open the second Square Polygon shape file, and that will become our Square 2 layer. And then we're going to output from intersecting those two polygons, so we'll just call it Test 1. And then that will be a polygon geometry type. Okay, so then we'll get our first square feature from our layer one, and then we'll get a square feature from our layer two. And then we'll get the geometry. So this will get us the geometry from square one and the geometry from square two. And then we simply say, well, take this geometry, which is basically the polygon from square one, and intersect it. So that's the function we're going to use with the polygon from square two. So that will create this new geometry, which is the intersection of those two polygons. And then basically we just have to save it. So what we do is get the layer definition, so we get the fields, and then set the geometry of our output to the result from this intersection function. And then we just create our feature object, and then we can destroy our data source so we can look at it in our GIS. Basically, this just unlocks the data source. So let me call this output um, just intersect.shape. So intersect. And then we'll run this script. Okay, so it runs successfully, and then we'll look at the results in our GIS. Okay, so here's our first square, square 101, and then here's our second square, square 201. So those were basically the two input polygons that we used in our script, and then we ran the intersection function to create our output polygon, and that would result in this polygon here. And in this case, we didn't set any fields, so it won't have um, the fields from Polygon 201, and it won't have the information from Polygon 101. It's simply going to be this polygon, and it won't have any fields. But if you wanted to, you could set the fields from Polygon 101 to be equal to this polygon, or both, if you wanted to. Okay, what if you wanted the opposite? So what you want to do is use um, this polygon and erase any area that's overlapping with this polygon. So that's our next step in a Python script is basically erase this area. Any area that's overlapped becomes erased. Okay, so this will be very similar to the script that we use for intersection. The only difference will be my output I called erase.shape. And when we get to our function, instead of using the function um, intersection, we'll use the function dot symmetrical difference. So basically, take this polygon object and erase with this polygon object any area that overlaps. So we'll run this script. and it runs successfully, and then we'll look at the results using our GIS. Okay, so once again, here's our first input polygon, uh, square 101, and here's our second input polygon, square 201, and then we ran the symmetrical difference function, and that created our output called erase. So basically, if we look at erased, it gives us the resulting polygon where any area that's overlapped is basically an empty donut hole in this polygon or it's been erased anywhere there's an overlap area. Okay, if you go to the NRM 638 website, I've got um, the assignment for this week posted there as a PDF with instructions on how to download the data. And your assignment is to do two out of four problems. And the first problem is a classic distance problem. And what we have are a polygon um, shapefile. 
and the polygon shape file is called vegpolys. And if we look at the attribute polygon for these vegpolys, there's an attribute called willow. So willow either is going to contain the string no, or it's going to contain the string yes. So what you can do is in your script, set an attribute filter on that layer. And then basically if um, willow is yes, then we're going to keep that feature and we'll do that via an attribute filter. Okay, so for example, here is set the attribute filter willow equals yes will give us only the willow polygons. And then basically you'll have 30 animal locations and you're going to loop through those 30 animal locations and then basically for every point figure out the distance to all the willow polygons and then get the minimum distance from that list of minimum of distances to willow polygons. So then basically you'll have the minimum distance to willow polygons for every point. And then we simply want the mean distance among those minimum distance to willow polygons. So for example, my first feature might be this feature here. And then what you'd have to do is say, okay, for this point, go out and calculate the distance to every polygon that's willow. So basically loop through all the willow features and then calculate the distance to every willow polygon for that point and then just store the minimum distance. So you'll have 30 minimum distance because you have 30 animal location points and then the question is what's the mean of those 30 minimum distances. So if you go to the website I explain it in a little more detail at the website in that PDF. Okay, the second problem is a classic um, adjacency problem. So here we've got the Chena River. Let me symbolize that in blue. And then let me symbolize the parcels in beige. Okay, and what we want to do is determine for every parcel that's adjacent to the Chena River, what is the mean land value? So, for example, um, we could select this parcel is adjacent to the Chena River and this parcel is adjacent to the Chena River, etc. We want to select all the parcels adjacent to the Chena River. And then once we have all those parcels adjacent to the Chena River, we want to extract from those features um, the land value. So what you're going to have to do is to get those parcels adjacent to the Chena River, is use the dot distance function and the question is is the distance from each parcel less than one meter from the Chena River and if it is we're going to consider it adjacent to the Chena River and then once you have all those parcels that are adjacent to the Chena River you're simply going to loop through those parcels and then um, sum up the land value and then once you have the land value of all those parcels summed up you would simply divide that by the total count of parcels adjacent to the Chena River to get the mean land value of the parcels that have Chena River frontage. Okay, the third problem will be an intersection problem. And you'll have the Kanuni National Life Refuge, which is this boundary here, it's a polygon. And then you'll have Alaska wildfire polygons. And what we want to do is use the intersection function to cut out all the fire polygons inside the Kanuti National Wildlife Refuge. And then for each polygon that's inside the refuge, calculate the area of that polygon in hectares and output that to a shapefile. So the resulting polygon shapefile would be something like this, and it will have a field named hectares. And then for each polygon, we would have the area in hectares. So for example, if I identify this polygon, we get its original name from the original fires, but we also recalculate the area in hectares of that polygon inside the refuge. Okay, and the th last problem you can solve will be a classic containment problem. 
So here are polygons, our ecoregion polygons. So for example, here's the Tanana Kusakwim Lowlands polygon. And then you'll have all the lightning strikes from last June. And what we want to know is within each ecoregion polygon, how many lightning strikes there were, and then what's the area of each polygon in 100 square kilometers. And then once you know those two pieces of information, you can compute the lightning density in terms of lightning strikes per 100 square kilometers per polygon. So one way to solve this problem would be to loop through each polygon in the ecoregion layer and then set your spatial filter to be the polygon that you're working with in that loop. So basically, the first time through the loop, our spatial filter might be, for example, um, this polygon, the Yukon Old Crow Basin. So since we've set the spatial filter to the Old Crow, Yukon Old Crow Basin polygon, it will consider only the lightning strikes inside that polygon. And then the next time through the loop, it might be the Davidson Mountains polygon as your spatial filter. So basically, you're going to loop through each polygon, and then you could set your spatial filter as a function of the ecoregion polygon. And then once you have your spatial filter um, set, then you would just have to basically get the number of lightning strikes within that spatial filter. So you could basically say, well, take my lightning strike layer and then get feature count to get the number of strikes in that layer. And then basically you're going to calculate lightning strike density as the total number of strikes inside each polygon divided by the area of each polygon in 100 square kilometers. Okay, so if you go to the NRM 638 website, there's a PDF that explains these problems. And for this week, you have a choice to solve two out of four of these